comes uh, as we age. So first, uh, I want to thank all of you for being here. Cool to see you guys right now. Um, even when I was little, my dad was very big on community and First of all, I'm going to do everything because I, I like to talk a lot. I've talked a lot in my life, and this is going to be the hardest period of time that I've talked. So bear with me because the odds of me making it through this without crying are pretty small. Uh, second, if I curse, I'm sorry. I won't be to be cursing a lot. I might go So I apologize. But first, my dad, a very, very creative man, thought it was the only do him justice to have a glass of wine with him. Very nice. Summer's touch. It's, it's really lovely to touch. Here we're tired on it. Just gonna pour a little for him. I think he'll be able to reach it from here. <laughs> so cheers, ever lovely man. Um, I had this whole I got a written pocket, this whole like speech plan written. I had it written for over a year because as you know, you've been fighting for quite a long time. I've had something for a really long time, and uh, over like 20 minutes ago, I went to the bathroom and I, and I thought of the story my mom told of how when they were younger, they were at a bar, and he, <laughs> and he uh, just got up, got up on the bar at one point and started singing Frank Sinatra's New York, like, da, 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 New York, New York, and thought about his flair for the improvisational, the dramatic, and I thought it wouldn't necessarily Listen, it's a really good song. I went to the bathroom back then, cried since it was great. And uh, thought about, I don't want to feel robotic. So I'm going to talk, and if I need to take a second and look at my paper, I'll do that. But uh, there, are a few, there are a few main things I think about that like bring, like when I think about my dad's story and, and everything he meant to some of the people, there's a, a few main things that kind of ring true. Uh, and I want to highlight those. The, the first, and in my opinion, the most storybook fairy tale theme is redemption. Because in my opinion, my dad's got the coolest, most fascinating redemption story I've ever heard. Um, I don't think you want me to beat around the bush for, for a lot of his life. My dad was a, a raging asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a, an alcoholic that suffered from a disease. And I'm sure that a lot of you have unseemly stories or memories of things that might have happened in that time period. And I remember times when we were young, things being hard and being somewhat flattering moments and trying to kind of figure out the past. Like there's two, there's two decisions that you could either, okay, this guy sucks, or you could believe in those moments of light and clarity that would shine where he'd be really compassionate really caring, and those moments well, always gave us hope. And even through his disease, and it took me a really long time to understand that it was in fact the disease that caused all these things and were providing a, a blockage of sorts over these amazing qualities. And once I realized that, it helped a lot. In circumstances of this, absolutely freaking, I caught myself, freaking suck. Um, <laughs> I was uh, telling my, my siblings and my mom the other day, I almost look at cancer as a blessing because eight years ago, when he was first diagnosed with bladder cancer, um, I remember the hospital visit where he had pneumonia and started, uh, he, we were in the hospital room and he started hallucinating us vision. And that was the moment I realized he was going through withdrawal. And from that point forward, all of the time I spent growing up being like, what if my dad was just like he was in the mornings all the time? He became that person all of the time. And since he was forced to become sober, frankly because of cancer, he became this incredible, compassionate, creative, loving, and downright amazing, inspiring person. 
that we can all remember better now. And I freaking hate cancer for this, <laughs> but at the same time, there's a, a big part of it that's really grateful that it has allowed us to see the version of my dad that he was always meant to be. And the person that, you know, would call Steve and ask him he was bringing wood and the grandkids over, call Shalane and ask him if she was bringing the grandkids over, uh, want to hang out with us all the time, want to make these freaking amazing paintings and do all this really, really cool stuff. Like that person came about because cancer allowed him to be the disease. And if you had told me eight years ago, your dad's gonna pass away right now, but you're gonna get to have these moments, I'd have taken that deal 10 times out of 10. And the redemption story that he has, I think is truly amazing. And we get to have these awesome memories, not nothing clouded with anything, because he was able to, to defeat his disease. He did beat it. And even this disease, I mean, eight years of cancer, five different cancers, that's ridiculous. And he fought up until, up until the very, very, very end. And I, he, he passed away on Sunday, and on Friday, one of the last things he told me was that he was gonna beat it. Because he was always fighting, no matter what, right to the end. And I'll say, like, if, if the first cancer had beaten him, and I hadn't got to experience the redemption, the love, and the, like, there's no, like, we get to live our lives without having that. What if dad had done this? Because he did do it. I think that's a really cool and beautiful thing. No matter what, for the rest of my life, I'm going to remember that redemption. Because it not only teaches you like a lot about my own relationship with my dad or your relationship with him, whatever it may be, but it's also a beautiful lesson in kind of believing in the best of people, frankly. And knowing that we see those glimpses, those glimmers, those uh, slumbers of, of light that, I mean, really like so. We, he grew a lot of plants. Sometimes plants didn't go so well. And he would always say that he just didn't have the right thing set up for him. He didn't have the right fertilizer, didn't have the right water, light exposure, whatever it may be. If you see a plant that can sprout, you just gotta make sure it has the right foundation, the right environment. And I think it's a beautiful lesson that can be taken from, from his battle. Uh, so I wanna highlight how amazing his redemption story is. I'm gonna take it down and take another, take another sip. So I'm gonna go on to the next one. Cheers, Dad. It's pretty solid wine. It took him a while. The first couple didn't taste very good to me. But <laughs> this is this is pretty pretty solid. Um, and I think his creation of the wine, his dedication to it, really lends itself well to the, the second thing that I'm gonna think about with him, and that is, I don't really know how to word this, but I was thinking about it, but it, he really maximized himself and lived fully. Like, growing up, he would always have his gardening, and he'd always be out there and want to garden. I remember when I was in high school, or coming back from college, and he, it'd be, you know, I'd, the, the room that I stayed in when I come back from college, he, he was in the basement, so we'd walk through it all the time. And every single day, we'd walk through, we'd turn on all the lights. Son, you're wasting the day away. The sun's going away. You're wasting the day. And I'd look at my phone, it'd be 5.55 a.m. <laughs> and because he wanted to get rolling, he wanted to get going. He wanted to live his day. And I think that that attitude permeated itself through the way that he approached everything in his life. You look at these, I mean, I, I'm obviously young, but we go going through the last couple of days, some of the, the photos of all the years. My man lived a full life, it appears. He, he did a lot of things, I'm sure all of you have uh, amazing memories of him doing those things, and, I, and I'd love to, to hear them after I'm done here. Um, but after, after he started to be a little bit less mobile, couldn't necessarily be the outside gardening things as much, he dove himself into other towns. And I hope that you've taken the time to be able to see some of these incredible paintings because my dude worked hard. And we've got, no doubt, 100 plus in the house of all things he made. And that doesn't include the ones that he has made for people and things like that. And not only did he do that, but he made, he made 
clay busts of, of myself, my little brother. My little brother's, which looks like a wax museum portrait, is very, very accurate. And he, he made wine, he experimented with different flowers, he wanted to, to see something or see himself and say, hey, this could be this thing. Why don't I take the steps to make it that thing? Like when we moved into this house that we live at now, the entire, it's uh, like a four acre property, but the entire back three acres were just covered and shrouded in a whole bunch of mess, a whole bunch of brush, trees, all these things. You could, you could get right down the street. If you were to drive by when you leave, look at it, all it's just clear, or all the stuff's clear. And the, he, after he couldn't work anymore, he decided that he wanted to take every day as a working day. So he still worked nine to five. And so he cleared this entire back area and turned it into like this magical wonderland where he set up a gazebo. He's got this little like cowboy country stove with like a little uh, fire pit type area that he would go out and make his breakfast in. He's got seats. Like he, he saw this overwhelming jungle of madness and said, ah, that's gonna look good one day. And he made it look amazing. And he set up a paintball field out there he created a, a golf hole, a par three golf hole, co complete, by the way, with bent grass that he grew himself that we ordered online. And I didn't know at the time, I thought he was just like trying to do a cool thing. My mom told him it was because he wanted to have me come up with him. And he wanted to spend more time with his family because he wanted to give all of himself to the people he loved. And I thought that's a, I think that's a really beautiful thing. He would build benches. He would, I mean, shoot, like, like even the, the stories I've heard from before I was alive, like the investment that he made into the soccer community, the, I, a bunch of my friends' parents used to go to the bar that him and my mom ran, and had extra innings, and still hear those stories, and hear his commitment to like that community, and to maximizing yourself, to living fully. And I think it's a beautiful thing. And I, Part of that, he grew these, he grew these like 14 foot tall sunflower plants. So I thought it was really cool we had sunflowers in here too, because he was like, you know what I can do? I can grow a Goliath sunflower. <laughs> and then he did that. And like he, he looked at things in a way that, frankly, I don't know how to look at it yet, but I hope that I can carry that on moving forward, because I always thought it was a really cool thing. Like, I don't know how you look at a pile of clay, like, I'm gonna make that look exactly like my son and then successfully do it. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was a really, really cool thing. And, and the way that he wanted to use those talents to showcase his love, I think is also a really beautiful thing. Um, because particularly these last several years after we've started down this path of redemption, after we really establish ourselves with uh, diving into some of these incredible talents. Um, it was when we could really, really start to feel him showcasing his love, which is another main thing that I'm gonna remember uh, going forward. Because my dad, so, there, my, my dad wasn't necessarily the most emotionally intelligent or book intelligent person but the effort was amazing. And you could always tell, like even if he didn't quite present it or didn't say the right things, that his effort was there and that he loved. I know, I mean, shoot Raymond, wherever you are, um, him painting uh, his grandpa Shorty's truck for you, he was really excited to give you that. And I know that this cheese thing, uh, Mahomes and Kelsey down here, he was really excited to give me that. He was really excited to, to make our bus. He, I mean, he made a golf hole so that I would come over more, and I came over like twice a week already. Like, he really loves his family <laughs> a lot. And he loved, Stephen would always bring over uh, wood, and it'd be like every morning, I'd like, I'm just gotten up, I'm making my coffee. Talk to Stephen, is he bringing wood? What's going on, is Stephen coming over to see me? Because I mean, like, he liked the wood, but he wouldn't see Stephen. And I think that was cool. And he talked to Shalane, she'd come and she'd call or whatever it may be, but he really loved his family. The way that he showcased it is incredible. And the I, I would say I 
very, very blessed and privileged to have been a first-hand witness to the amazing love story that my mom and him have had over these years. They've been together 39 years. My mom is 17 years old. Well, that means you were. And, and they have been together through thick and thin no matter what. And even like, I mean, should we, my, my little brother's flight got canceled because of the sun this morning, but uh, I was thinking about a thing where like, even when he was sick and he's like not able to move, we had to carry him out and everything, he wouldn't let her go to the airport by herself because he wanted to protect her and he wanted to be there. And even no matter what, He's like, this is my, this is my apartment. And being able to see that through the thick and thin, no matter what, is just an unbelievable example of love. And I'm so grateful for it. And if you haven't had a chance to check this out, my favorite thing that he's ever made. My favorite thing that he's ever made. They were in a huge fight. And he showed up with this handcrafted heart that he handcrafted the words into. They were in a huge fight, no, they weren't talking, and um, <laughs> screw her, screw him off. Well, I mean, you know, like, it happens, it happens, it happens. Um, but he handcrafted the words in here. Love can bend, twist, turn, and buckle, but never break. And he gave it to her, and then they love each other again. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I just, I, I look at this, I mean, it was always in the hallway, every time I walk down the hallway, I look at it, because I just think it's such a beautiful, beautiful reminder. And, and, and also, because my dad was an imperfect man, with, with a lot of flaws, but with so much good. My, my favorite part about this, on top of like the mushy gushy, like, oh, you guys love each other. Like, on top of that, he misspelled buckle, and, <laughs> and I, I think it just like adds like the perfect Daryl Summers touch of like, you know, a little imperfection, but so much love and so much caring. And I'm grateful for one, that for the rest of my life, I will not have to question what would have happened if my dad didn't drink so much. And what would happen if things were better all the time because they were and I got to see this love permeate and now I get to go live my life with this incredible compassionate example where especially these last couple years everything that he did from dawn to dusk was about how do I how do I maximize myself for my family my cousin Zach up here one of the beautiful things he worked he worked his ass off and like the, the back ends of the house. And my cousin Zach saw me the other night, and he told him to roll me. Well, he, he said that um, he had told him when he was trying to use his chainsaw when he could barely like, lift his arms and like cut down this stuff and was like sneaking out against our demands to like do all these things that <laughs> he wanted to leave that as a legacy for us, for, for his kids. And he, he was sick. My dude could barely walk. My dude couldn't lift his arms. He'd torn the rotator cuff like 40 years. So he's like trying to do the chainsaw and he has to hold like this. And he did all that because he loved us. He knew it was something special for us. And I always thought that that was a really special, really beautiful thing. And I'm so grateful despite the circumstances that we've been able to experience that. And that I could put really no doubt that all of you could really know him in the light that he was meant to be. And uh, I had to pull my picture out for this part. But I mean, so when I, when I remember my dad, on top of, I think the determination goes without saying, because who, who else beats, fights five cancers over eight years with your body or average and then comes out swinging? That's an insane thing. And to do that and then also develop all these times, oh, I, 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 I excuse me. I forgot to mention, uh, this was supposed to flow in better earlier, but I forgot. His music, awesome. <laughs> His music was awesome. Uh, we used to have these, these moments, you know, I'd be over dinner, or if I'd be over there in the morning, he'd play his organ, and he'd play beautiful songs, 
and he would treat the company or like whoever was in the room because he would want everyone to have like a good ambiance. And I think that was him to a T because he wanted people to be having a good time. And he wanted to be nice. I think that's really, really cool. Uh, I remember my dad for, for being a lot of things. I remember him. I was hoping I could remember this list, but I can't. <laughs> I, I remember him for, for being my dad, for being a sermon, for being a painter, for being a gardener, for being a grandparent, for being a partner, for being a protector, for being an inventor, a supporter, for being an inspirer, Shoot, for being an athlete, for being a musician, and I remember being a sculptor, a florist, <laughs> a lot of things, a boy. Oh, sorry, that's a little joke. Um, I remember being a lot of things, and most of all, uh, I remember him for his love, for being my dad. And he always said, he always said, he was like, and he even told us to put this on his tombstone before it got a little bit more closer to him and we were figuring out what comes on that part of it. But he would always say, you know, I need you to remember me, I'm the meanest, toughest <laughs> son of a bitch you ever met. That was always what he said. And he'd be like, what am I, Joe? What are you, Joe? No, he hated that I went by Joe. What are you, Joseph? What am I, Joseph? You're the meanest, toughest son of a bitch I ever met. And I won't remember the mean part because I got to see the, the real amazing part. But I would remember him being the toughest son of a bitch I've ever met. And I'm really grateful for that. You know, I don't know if any of you ever see Boston Eagle, um, but William Shatner's character, Denny Crane, he, whenever he does like something nefarious or ridiculous, he would always be like, well, yeah, I'm Denny Crane. And my dad <laughs> loved that show. And he would always, he would like say something off the top, like some vulgar things probably want to be. But he would, you know, like you could probably put it in your head, especially if you know pretty well. And he, uh, he would say something like that. He'd be like, well, yeah, I'm Daryl Summers. <laughs> and, and I'm going to have that in my head for forever. And I'm grateful. And I love him so much. And I can't thank you enough, all of you. Being here. I hope I send I'm sure I forgot a million things that I want to say. Um, but I would really love to hear the stories that any of you might have to share, even if it's something simple like uh, I don't know, if he's like saying a stupid thing or whatever it may be. Uh, I would love to hear your stories. And I just know I'm gonna remember the, the strongest, the toughest son of a bitch I've met. And I'm so blessed and grateful be his son, and I look forward to honoring his legacy for as long as I live. I love you, Dad.